Ever since the bombs dropped in 2077, the power lines have set idle. There's no electricity. No way to charge your batteries. No way to power your drill. And yet, the field of carpentry lives on. How do we build such wonders without electricity? The humble push drill. All right, guys. So this is a Stanley Model 130A Yankee screwdriver. And yeah, it's a long boy. This is one of the original ratcheting screwdrivers. It has a push feature where you just push down on it and it drives the screw in. Mine's in pretty good shape, but the mechanism is gummed up so it doesn't operate smoothly. Before we take this apart to clean it, let's go into a little bit of the history of this tool. This screwdriver's design was patented by a guy named Zachariah Furbish in 1905. The spiral shaft mechanism is what gives it the push drill feature. They were originally made for a company called North Brothers Manufacturing. Here's a North Brothers ad from 1918 showing a few of the different variations. North Brothers made them up into the 1940s when they sold the design to Stanley. Stanley continued to make these up into the 2000s. After Stanley discontinued them, they sold the tooling to a company in Germany called Schroeder. Schroeder continued to make these up until a few years ago. I was only able to find one place selling them, and that was Kmart. So there might still be some new old stock ones lying around. They have a quick-release chuck, which uses a unique type of bit, which has a little tail at the end and a little groove in the middle. The chuck design was also done by Furbish. Here you can see how the tail keeps the bit from turning when installed, and the pin holds that groove in place to keep the bit from falling out. Mine came with a quarter-inch hex bit adapter, which lets me use modern bits on it. Here's the chuck in action. You just pull back on the sleeve, insert the bit, rotate it so that tail engages, and then release the sleeve. I was able to download the disassembly instructions from Stanley's website. They're pretty intense, and there's a few special tools that are required to completely disassemble it. I don't have those, so we're just going to do a partial disassembly I want to take it apart just enough so that we can clean out some of the dried up gunk that's stuck in the mechanism. The first thing I'm going to do is use a big screwdriver to remove the end cap. This will let us remove the return spring that's inside. Not all models will have a return spring in there. This screwdriver is a model 130A. The model numbers that end in A are the ones that are supposed to have the return spring in there. There's also a wood plug at the end of the spring. Next, we're going to need to get the ratchet mechanism open. There is a tiny retaining screw here that we have to take out. So we'll carefully remove it and be sure not to lose it because it's really small. Once that screw is removed, I'm going to flip it over and you'll notice there's a little metal tab here and a little metal indentation in the sleeve above that tab. What we're going to want to do is rotate the sleeve so that tab goes into that small raised part in the sleeve. Once the sleeve has been rotated, we can slide it up. Now it's not going to slide all the way yet because we have that selector button on the top. We need to depress this to keep it under the sleeve. I had a little bit of trouble with mine, but eventually I got it. The sleeve needs to slide over that selector button. Once it does that, it'll slide right out. Now we have our exposed mechanism. We'll set the selector button aside, and then you'll be able to see the two pawls and the gear mechanism. We can just lift out the pawls, making sure to remember their orientation so we can put them back in the right spots later. Then here, you can see how the mechanism rotates inside during use. 
To clean this out, I'm just going to spray it down with brake cleaner. Before anybody freaks out, who ruined that antique by putting brake cleaner in there? I'm going to be careful not to get any on the painted handle, as the brake cleaner might eat the paint. But if you look in the factory disassembly instructions, it says you can clean the mechanism with gasoline. So I'm pretty sure brake cleaner is going to be okay. So here I'm flushing out all the residue from the inside of the mechanism. I'm also going to clean off the spiral shaft because I had a bunch of residue on it as well. And then I sprayed down the selector lever and the two pawls too. I hit the grooves in the spiral shaft with a small nylon brush to get rid of any remaining dirt in there. Now we're ready to reassemble. So before reassembling, I'm going to lube this up. I'm just using 3-in-1 oil for this. I'm not sure what oil you're supposed to use. And then we can put our pawls back in. I read conflicting information on whether or not you can flip these pawls around. So I made sure to put them back in the same spot as they were originally. And then our selector lever. I put a little extra oil on the pawls where the selector lever rides. And then once the selector is back in place, I'll slide the sleeve back down, making sure to keep the selector lever in place. And then we'll line up that metal tab with the recess in the sleeve, and then rotate it to lock it down. Now at first, my selector lever wasn't going back into the reverse position. I thought maybe I'd put something together wrong. But after moving it back and forth a couple of times, it's fine. So now we can put that little retaining screw back in. I don't know what the official torque value is for this. I just got it a little tight. And now we can put our return spring back in. I didn't put any oil on this. I just wiped it down with a paper towel. Once that's in, we can put the end cap back on and tighten it down. Again, I don't know if there's a special torque value you're supposed to use on this. I just got it tight. Now we'll add some more oil onto the spiral shaft. I'm probably putting too much oil on here. After applying the oil, I cycled the action a few times and then I wiped off the excess. You can see here it's working much better now, much smoother. Before, you couldn't even retract it by hand. Let's put it in reverse and we'll see if we can remove that screw that we drove in earlier. Yep, it's working the way it's supposed to now. Let's switch it to forward and drive that screw back in. Yeah, the push feature is working great now. All it took was that little cleaning. Now that it's working properly, I'll show you another feature that it has. You can retract it by hand and then rotate the cap on the end of the mechanism to lock it in the retracted position. This is great for storage or if you just want to use it as a regular screwdriver. So if you also want to be able to do carpentry projects after the apocalypse, keep an eye out for these at garage sales and flea markets. I've got this one plus two smaller ones that I picked up for less than $5 each. I might do videos on the other two sometime in the future. Now there's a lot of cheap knockoff versions on Amazon. I would avoid those. They all have pretty bad reviews. Garrett Wade sells an expensive one. At one time, these were made by Schroeder in Germany, but they no longer say made in Germany on the website. So I don't know who they're sourcing these from, and I doubt they're made on the original Stanley equipment. I'd recommend the flea market route, or just search for Yankee Screwdriver on eBay. There's a ton of them there. All right, thanks everyone for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for more videos. See you later. Bye.